Really? Usually I would go into my spiel of, you know, rant or mad, news of the day, diatribe, all that. I don't really need to do that at this particular moment. What in the blue hells of fuck was that? This goddamn call. Like as I said in the last video, you know, this drama that we, we get from this chaotic, dying gasps of this presidency is something out of a movie. We should be hearing dramatic music when we're here when we see shit like this. It should be dramatic turns from various people when they find out this revelation. This is not what should be happening in reality. Between a president of the United States, a secretary of state of a state to try to, to browbeat, cajole, flatter, force, bully, threaten these officials to find him 11,780 votes so they could turn the tide in that state so they could win the election. If this is acceptable to any of you Trump supporters, then you have no concept of what it means to live in a democracy. I don't want to get this win at all cost. This is not a game. This is for the country. This is not just owning the libs and is the only reason to keep this piece of shit in the White House. You know, from day one, I am not ashamed to say that I said he was unqualified and disqualified for the office. People say, oh, give him a chance, give him a chance. You saw what he was during the campaign. You saw through his behavior, through his mannerisms, through the way he talked, the way he tweeted, that he had no concept under God what it means to be president of the United States. But it's a party, right? I mean, for those who just live vicariously out of what this rich plutocratic hedonist was doing, wishing that you could be like him, those who are in his, through the campaign or those in his fan base that says, we like him because he says what they think. And it's odd that Every, everything he says, this stable genius comes out as juvenile and erratic, petulant and immature, with no concept of understanding anything, of any matter of note of politics, of ethics, of civics. I just got done doing a video yesterday. I should be like, you know, relaxing on my last day of the last vacation, where I sent back out to go into the grind of work again. But this drops. And, you know, it's not like I'm surprised. I'd be surprised if, if certain amounts of these calls have not been done to various other states, all sounding pretty much the same. I wouldn't be surprised at that either. <sighs> but we're getting a reaction from this. And from according to The Hill, a Georgia Democratic lawmaker to seek censure of Trump over Ratzenberger call. That's my girlfriend. I probably butchered that, but the call. Hey. Good health. Star Pardon that. A Democratic lawmaker from Georgia said that said Sunday that he would introduce a motion to censure President Trump in the House on, on Monday over audio of him pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State to overturn the results of the 2020 election in the Peach State. Representative Hank Johnson, who represents part of Georgia's DeKalb County, pardon me if I'm not doing that right, tweeted that President's remarks to Brad Raffensperger, yeah, in audio reported by the Washington Post earlier Sunday, 
con constituted a violation of state and federal law. Tomorrow, quote, I will introduce a resolution of censure. Trump should resign now, Johnson tweeted. Well, that's not going to happen. The House censure holds no legal binding power, but serves as the highest form of official rebuke the body can serve a president short of filing articles of impeachment. The Georgia lawmaker was one of the many Democrats to react with outrage after the audio of Trump's call was published Sunday. A number of Democrats, including Senate, Senate Minority Whip Dick Durbin, have called for the president to face consequences up to and including criminal investigation over his remarks. On the call, the president can be heard pressuring the man to find more than 11,000 votes needed for Trump to surpass the president-elect Joe Biden in the state an idea that the official firmly rejected in the conversation. The president can also be heard on the call talking about a number of conspiracy theories involving the 2020 election, including unproven allegations about tampering involving Dominion voting machines and ballots supposedly being shredded in Fulton County. There has been no evidence presented to prove such allegations. Several top federal officials have dismissed such theories and dozens of lawsuits filed by the Trump campaign has been tossed. I asked the article. We have heard this tape. Those who go through go through the uh, news medias will hear experts of excerpts of it. You can probably find it anywhere now. Uh, I am recording this immediately after watching Vin and DL do their video on this. So this is my reaction to that. At the point of saying that this is not normal, we're beyond that point. We've been beyond that point for over a year. There's so many instances of things not being normal and not being presidential. This petulant thing wants to browbeat his way to a win when he is clearly lost. He does not understand the concept that all the legal challenges have been tossed away. I don't, I don't know where this candy land reality lives where this for a 70 plus year old man can be allowed to just perpetuate his bullshit in his delusions that sycophants around them that treat him as a meal ticket support him and reinforce him on that because they fear of the trump fan base that will not vote for them next time trump on the call talks about the runoff and how people in georgia are so mad that they might not vote at all threatening the guy about, you know, they might vote, but they might vote negatively. How do you vote negatively? What the hell is that? I mean, what's voting positively? Is it voting positive, positively meaning that they will vote Republican and voting negative mean they'll vote Democratic? Fine. I don't care about that. That's fine. I know uh, Lid, that goddamn Trump acolyte lawyer, uh, told people not to vote in the runoff. That since the whole thing is rigged and illegitimate, that there's no point in voting. So I love the suicidal sabotaging of the Republican Party by by this conspiracy theories that have first of all, first has no basis in reality, and secondly, what they're saying is screwing up the Republican Party. You know, telling people not to vote for your own party doesn't give you any power that makes you lose power and as we said in the last video and we're here so up in the air of there being an increase in the COVID relief it's up to two thousand dollars well people are already getting their six hundred dollar checks so if they're going to do this at all this would be a separate thing that would come separately from outside of the COVID relief bill which has already passed which Trump has already signed he signed after throwing his $2,000 hand grenade. He already signed it. But the narrative's still there that Republicans don't want Americans to have a $2,000 check and they will block it. 
which will tell Americans, even those Americans who are not, you know, news wonky like a lot of us that follow this stuff to the detriment of our own health at times, that Republicans don't want you to have $2,000 checks. Democrats want you to have $2,000 checks. Which one are you going to vote for in Georgia? I don't know how long this is going to be because there's really not much to this. This is a naked abuse of power recorded for posterity. Prosperity. Or whatever. Probably both. It is there. It could be sent to the Library of Congress. People can listen to this in the future and see how far a presidency has fallen that they could hear a president bitch, moan, control, bully, frankly, in a way, beg to find 11,780 votes. You know, bad things will happen to you, but if you just find those 11,700 votes, then I'll win. We have someone at the head of a political party as president. With the 74 million people voting, maybe not majority of them are fanatics, but let's say a good portion are, who follow this, all all the conspiracy theories, putting on their tinfoil red hats, They're following a man who has no understanding of politics, no understanding of this country's history, no understanding of civics or ethics, who doesn't understand the very office that he sits and that he's he's begging people to keep him in office. All because his ego cannot handle him losing. Kicking and screaming, they will pull him out. You know, we're hearing stories of on there going to be like dual inaugurations, that there's going to be a party for Trump for him winning re-election elsewhere because we, we, we simply can't allow reality to exist now can we and again as i said in the last time this doesn't help where you where where you're stoking up the hate the conspiracy theories uh the victimization because all oh, you are victims now they stole it from you what are you going to do about it stoking that up. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to make America great again? See, things don't have to be said directly for there to be a tragedy. Things don't have to be said overt for there to be a tragedy. I'm not going to go through the list again as I did last time. But I will go back to the concept of if you have a hundred Trump supporters I listen to this loose lip rhetoric bullshit, these conspiracy theories, and all, all this other tinfoil crap, that there could be one. In a room of a thousand, there could be ten. How many in that, in that multiplier is there when you go up to 74 million voters? That you have no responsibility or feel no urge to level with and give reality to that a loss has happened. You fought the good fight for your president or your party, if needs be, if you're not really that, that sycophantically loyal. You fought for your conservative values, even though those are not being damaged in any way. Because Joe Biden is not a radical progressive here. Joe Biden is a centrist. For those people who, which means that both the left and the right are going to have issues with them. Less likely on the right. But they'll be. I mean, I know certain people who, who seem to think that if we're not having some uber-progressive left-winging firebrand wearing a beret, you know, thrusting out all these progressive ideals, all these policies now when we're adding a troubled point where we do not have 
we don't have a strong majority anywhere. But you want to throw this stuff out. You know, hard left when the country's not really ready for that yet. That, you know, anyone that does not do that, well, 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 we can't trust them. We can't trust a centrist who can compromise. I mean, people are already betting on the, the future presidency to be a disaster. That is not going to work before there's even an inauguration. I love it how when Trump gets elected, that everyone was supposed to give him a chance. Give him a chance. You know, you know, he might calm down. Maybe all this rhetoric stuff was for the cameras and for the campaign. And then, you know, once he settles into the office, he'll learn the job and then he'll be responsible at the job. We were told specifically over and over again to give him a chance, give him a chance. You know, how far of a chance did we're we supposed to give him? But this one comes in, you're not giving any chances, right? Right? You know, someone who may be going through decline, you just want to give him shit. You know, he does, he's been a gaff machine for years. And you bring that up as like a negative now. You don't know what he's going to do. Regardless of who he tells, some Wall Street cronies or other that you bring up. You don't know. I didn't know what Trump would do. I had a good assumption. I assumed. And ironically enough, a lot of my assumptions proved out to be right. But you judge slowly. You don't judge on the day one or 20 days plus before day one even shows up. You wait and you see, then the evidence will bear itself out. Now, on that score, for the sake of ethics and politics and civics, understand that in a divided Congress, even with the Senate runoff, if even that goes Democratic, in that Democratic-led Senate as a majority, that is a slim majority. That is things where Kamala Harris will have to go back to the Senate House again and again and again to place her vote in order for there to be a 51 to 50. All right? Majority in the House, a little bit better, but it's slimmer than it was last time around. So you have to understand that there is going to be compromises. If any measures are going to be made, it has to be made on a bipartisan fashion. And not everything is going to be gotten. Not everything is going to be gotten immediately. But the, the genius of compromise that we've seen for the two plus centuries of us as a United States is the compromise is that you get something, I get something. I give you a concession, you give me a concession. We both agree, we take two steps forward. Look at the situation we are now with the COVID relief. That's already passed, but then the push for $2,000 checks. Mitch McConnell's never going to go for that. Lindsey Graham, as I said last time around, is now pushing for a separate thing for $2,000 checks. One, because he's a Trump loyalist and Trump said it, so therefore, you know, try to appease the fan base. And two, he understands that in this time before the runoff, the narrative is, I already laid out that Republicans don't want you to have $2,000 checks, but Democrats do, so you may want the Democrats be voted in and have control of the Senate so you could have them. Lindsay might understand that and push for that. But Mitch doesn't need to. He has no, there's enough, he's, he's there for six years. He can gamble on six years of time going by where things will settle down and people will forget. He has the luxury of doing that. Is a luxury of living in a gated community with 
very good health care where he or his family has no need and has, doesn't, under, doesn't need to understand what you may need, what hardships you may go through. If you lose your job, if you get evicted, if $600 is the scrap on the table, you can live on that, right? As you've been waiting for nine months for them to negotiate a second infusion of relief since the first? Infuriates me that we as a country have to be put through this. That this thing in the White House has so little respect for the office that he is squatting in, that he's leaving stains in the in the chair as he sits. It infuriates me how our body politic is now, you know running the risk of Roman levels of decadency. It makes me fearful how there is no one on the Republican side that wants to be adult enough to tell this fan base that it's being ratcheted up for revolution if they don't get their way. Or people are saying that they will go into DC that they'll go into the Senate building and drag out the DC traitors before they certify the election on the 6th. No one is putting a stop to that. I'm not saying that it actually would happen. As I said, out of 100 Trump supporters, one might get into their head to make America great again, as Patrick did, as a Coast Guard LT did, as the super fan tried doing. You can give the benefit of doubt to a majority. That, you know, even if they're going to stand up there with their weapons, their cosplay G.I. joe for the name of their Trump America, that more or like they're just there to stay in the line, to chant their rhetoric, to try to piss off the libs. One person can make a tragedy. And this shit, this powder cake, that is drying, just waiting for that match. Louis Gohmert, that dipshit, tried to sue Pence to force him not to certify the votes. Well, he lost his court case. So what did Mr. Gohmert, a congressman, an officer of our body politic do? Advocate violence in the street. How is that remotely acceptable? Perhaps prior to the Civil War? This call Trump did. This is an example of the calls that he's been making on all these states that went to Biden that he just couldn't accept. For all these same states who had their court cases and those court cases thrown out, he's pushing for something that there is no, no, no evidence of. They told him that on that call. That no, Dominion is not changing out their machines or gutting their machines open, pulling parts out of them and replacing them. That didn't happen. No one's shredding ballots. They themselves said this. They, Secretary of State of Georgia, the officials of Georgia, Republicans said it. Again, this is a fucking movie. This is all drama, political theater. That means nothing. It rages me that we are at this point on the 3rd of January, that we have to drag this shit up potentially 17 days at least. That we would have to, after the 20th, give that piece of shit any more attention. 
Yeah, let him have his second White House in mar lago even though his neighbors don't want him to move back there. His COVID Petri dish that he travels with. Because everywhere they go, they seem to be infecting people with COVID. Yeah, let him have that attention. Fine. But the media don't cover it. He's no longer president of the United States. There is no reason he's not making any news. So let him rant and rave for those dwindling fan base that follow him close. Maybe OAN will continue to cover him. Maybe in certain corners of Fox News will continue to cover him. For the rest, no more. After George W. Bush left, very few instances where his remarks were covered. Neither Obama, neither Clinton when he left, neither Bush Sr. when he left. There is no reason, outside of some landmark speech, being given somewhere, probably for the political fortunes of the next person in line at a convention, needs to be recorded, needs to be followed, needs to be talked about. After the 20th, there is no reason for anyone to follow Donald Trump or listen to what he has to say. He is no longer president of the United States. With the four years of people from the media to those on Twitter that had been held captive, because as a president, we have to hear what he has to say and treat whatever he says as seriously because it's coming out of the president, even when it's batshit crazy nonsense. That if he wasn't a president, if he was just got the guy at the end of the bar ranting like me, you wouldn't listen to. And if he got too loud, or he got too drunk, or he got too abusive, you kick him out. Well, 80 million people found this president of the United States to be too loud, too abusive, too abrasive, not productive, and they kicked him out. And that is a majority. That is a 7 million majority. All of this flailing, all of it, from Trump, from Trump's legal team that is only legal on TV since they go nowhere in the court, all the Trump sycophantic senators who are now going to come up in their dozen and go, I'm going to object to the certification. Be damn my own constituents, be damn the American people, be damn the will of the American people for whatever future benefit or windfall that's going to lead to. For those who are going to do that in the Senate and those who are going to try to do that in the Congress. And what are you going to do when that fails? And after January 21, you have President Biden. And then you are the ones that singled yourselves out to try to delegitimize that presidency. Do you think anyone's going to want to do any business with you? Or does it matter? Are you going to perpetuate this suicidal corruption to continue this bullshit that is going to harm us as a whole? So that the next time there's a presidential cycle, we'll no longer have the faith of our voters. We don't have the faith of the voting machines going through that your vote counted. Because so many of you people will push on this bullshit long enough that people are going to believe that, why should we try? It's all rigged, right? That American democracy, if it doesn't go your way and be shoved aside as you try to force the issue, and compel the removal of the will of the people. So you're representing 74 million? Well, 80 million is represented too.
I'm always worried about one side or the other side. And ironically enough, Joe Biden, as a centrist, is going to try to reach out. Trump never reached out. He doesn't give a shit. He never gave a shit. He doesn't give a shit of being a president with, a, with what that job meant. Never. Never understood it. Never bothered to try. He thought he was a king without a crown. That's why he makes declarations, why he was trying to browbeat the Secretary of State of Georgia, because it was his will. It was his determination. I'm notifying you that you're doing something criminal. What's your evidence? I don't need evidence. I don't even need to understand what I'm talking about. I just have to say it. And of course, the fan base will eat it up like kibble. But everybody else, who are responsible adults, you gotta think about long and hard. What compromises are, are you making to continue to support this man? All right, that's it for now. This was impromptu. This is just... This doesn't prove anything to you that he was unqualified and disqualified at the start. From day one to his last day. If you don't find this makes him unqualified and disqualified now, at the end, that he doesn't deserve it, that no one should deserve it if they go to these lengths, then do you really understand politics? Should you really be worrying about politics or civics or our government at all? Because you have no concept. Figure that out. Think about that. The ranter rants because the urge to rant hit rose today. I'll see you later.